Well, hello, Blue Troopers. Uh, I realize I've been doing a lot of broadcasting lately right here from my little broadcasting chair. I've been doing the videos from here. It's just with bottles spread all over the place, it's so much easier because this is kind of set up for this. But I will be doing some videos out in the Tarvis and other places uh, in the future. I just, this just kind of works. <laughs> um, so I hope it doesn't get too boring. I got some work done on the Douglas Royal Cruisers day. Got the radiators all painted, uh, mixed up. A couple of guys had some different ideas how to mix up the paint because the radiators are slightly different color. So I just played with them. No two of them are the same, but <laughs> 172nd scale, you can hardly tell. But it was still uh, interesting. Uh, some forward progress being made. Unfortunately, the decals are pretty dodgy. The only decals I had applied up to this point have been the instrument panels. And when I let them dry and then put the solvus or the micro, the uh, mark fit on them they just they curled and i don't mean like they got shrinky like in the expanded bag and got tight like they sometimes do they just curled peeled lost their adhesion um so uh i i tried and i had put some restore on them and they still broke up um so i put another layer i, I tried again today just using a couple of the stars uh bottom wing where you know, won't really notice them uh yeah one of them went on okay, one of them broke up, so I put on another layer uh, of the Restore. Hope that I've got to be, these, these decals are just super delicate. And I don't know if it's because they're old, um, they're breaking up easy, or maybe Williams Brothers just has really delicate decals. I didn't have this trouble on the Weedle Williams uh, airplane that I built by Williams Brothers models. So I, I think it's more a factor of age. I'm, I may wind up buying aftermarket decals. Like part of me just wants to save these. The color's still good on them, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I did get that link on on where to, to get the Williams Brothers decals. I, I haven't asked them if they actually have any in stock for this, but uh, we'll see. You know, there's there's still no rush. It's gonna be a long time before I'm done with them because I'm moving kind of slow on them. Uh, I also got a little bit of work done on the SR-71, uh, got the fuselage halves together. It's actually a fairly straightforward kit. Um, so I got to clamp down. The thing was, when I, I want to make it wheels up, so shaving the gear doors down, I was surprised. Once I snipped off everything and sanded down the inside so they'd fit, they dropped right into place on the main gears. The nose gears don't because they're made to go up inside the well to glue in place open. So they're way too big to uh, use closed and I have to tell you guys how much shaving sanding fitting shaving sanding fitting and finally you get them where they'll go in uh, I use a piece of tape to uh, uh, to hold them in place and that that's probably gonna take a little putty bondo touch up there that the nose the, the rear part of the nose gear is not a problem it's just the two doors that go like that I know some people will put something inside the bay so you have something to push against I like to use a piece of tape, glue them together, and then just, you know, once they're fitted, put glue around the edge, strap it down, let it harden, and peel the tape off. But uh, there's nothing behind them, so they can be kind of delicate. Um, hindsight being 2020, maybe I should have filled that uh, with putty or something. But uh, I, I'm not, not filler putty, uh, not model airplane putty. I mean, like, like, like silly putty or play doh And the problem is that stuff shrinks over time, too. Eh. Hey, you know. Could have glued a piece of plastic framing in there. That probably would have done it. Just some some sprue, just some curved sprue for them to lay on. And think about that till now. Hmm, that's a thought. So uh, anyway, not a big deal. Uh, I'm, I'll put a little putty to seal it up, sand it down, paint it. I'm gonna of course paint the model. But uh, didn't really get any work done in Arizona or anything else. I I did get some more layers, thin layers of paint on the uh, uh, yellow parts of the. Uh, uh, Douglas Rule Cruisers, but these are, these, this is just a base coat. I'm going to take the airbrush and uh, put acrylic yellow over this lacquer once it's had a day to harden because I want to, because the acrylic will lay on top of the lacquer, but um, I can get a more even control because I just, I, the base coats are just rattle can. I started touching up the paint with a, those paint pens that were sent to me yesterday by uh, Nicholas um, uh, and then going over that once that covered up the white uh, putty then I went over it with the aluminum paint that I was using to paint the stuff so it, it, it's working out so far so good uh, I've got the first wing on one of the fuselages and uh, yeah, you know it's a little bit of a snug fit but uh, you know not bad it's, so far it's going okay and 
that's where we're at. Uh, most, spent most of the day working on the Corsair video, P38 video. And uh, so, um, that, oh, heard from Ken. Uh, he's actually working today, but uh, he, he has been getting on the weekend and tinkering on the boat. So, uh, uh, he had an idea to talk about Maynard Hill on the next live stream. If you don't know him, you want to Google him, but world record setting RC guy that Ken actually knew personally. I've met several times and really great guy. Even though he was doing world, he's the one that made the first, it was a TAM 6, I think the first RC that flew autonomously across the ocean. Uh, yes, he flew a six foot wingspan radio controlled airplane across the ocean and a whole bunch of other stuff, altitude records. We'll talk about it. a real interesting guy. And uh, Ken thinks I ought to make a movie about him. We'll also probably talk a little about gunships. I might do a gunship video like the AC 47, the Spookies, because I got looking into that and without getting sidetracked here, there was. <laughs> It was just way more to it. I didn't realize the idea of machine guns sticking out the sides of airplanes for Kona fire dates back to World War II. We'll, we'll talk. They didn't do it in World War II. It's just the idea was they, they couldn't. You know what? We'll talk about it at the live stream. Um, if you want to get ahead, there are one or maybe one, two, or three articles on all the internet on something called Project Tail Chaser. And they called it that because when you're flying in a circle, you're literally chasing your own tail. And uh, it did not start with a DC-3 or C-47, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, guys, uh, that's what I got for now. Take care of yourselves, and as always, model on.